What's up everyone? I've found a telephone look. I've got a telephone here. Bamberg is where it was from. 205. I can show that telephone number because it probably doesn't exist anymore. Um, you know, it's a nice old telephone here. Um, I've just sort of been doing this, going through it, spraying a bit of contact cleaner um, on the contact there for the you know, the little switch and all that. It all seems to work alright. Why someone? Why somebody threw it away? I mean, is anyone's guess. Maybe it's just an old telephone and they didn't didn't want it anymore. Um, I don't know what uh, what it actually sounds like when you're speaking to someone yet, but I've plugged it in and I've rang it, and it rings and everything. You, you know, the, the speaker's all right. You can hear the dial-in tone and everything seems all right. What the microphone's like, what it sounds like on the other end, on the other end of the line. Don't know yet, but uh, I'll test that in due course. I'm just having a little mess around. It's got quite a long lead on it as well. It's quite handy. I suppose it even had the bloody lead on it, and it's it, and it's got a bloody plug on it. Look. So um, yeah, well pleased with that. Bamberg. Where the hell is Bamberg, I wonder? Oh, anyway, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm just doing a bit of a clean up. It's, uh, it's faded. You can see where it's faded. It's, uh, well, it's got a funny colour anyway. Obviously, it wasn't that colour back when it was new. Uh, well, it was that colour, but uh, I don't know. I can't really see it on the screen on my camera here, but you can see it in, with your own eyes. It's darker here and lighter up the top here. So. It's definitely, it's definitely gone a funny colour, but um, it's probably like from the 70s, I would have thought. It would be in that colour anyway, it's probably from the 70s, somewhere around there. Um, I dare say it would say somewhere on it, but um, sweet. Right, so I'm just going to take this apart, have a look in here, make sure everything's hunky-dory. It doesn't rattle or anything, so this was a bit loose, the board was loose. Um, the little um, bell ringer thing was loose, so I've tightened it all up, put switch cleaner on it all. Um, yeah, going to go and clean it all up, plug it in and dial a number and see who picks up. I'll just pick any random number, dial it, pick up, whoever picks up, I go, Hello there, what does it sound like? Blah, 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 just doing a bit of a test telephone call. Usually, you know, not everyone's interested, they're just like, go away, I'm not interested. But some people are like, oh, really? Oh, yeah, it works all right. Yeah, it's very nice. So, you know. Bit, uh, a bit of Russian roulette who you get on the other end of the telephone, but uh, yeah, you'll you see. People these days aren't interested really, are they? But there we go. Anyway, let's get back to that. One of the first things, well, one of the things that I always make sure that I always clean with a telephone um, and with a microphone, like for a radio, with a, if you buy a second hand radio and you get a second hand mic or something like that, I always take them apart and give them a clean up because when you think about it, and I always do the earpiece, I've already done the earpiece on this, um, when you think about it, that goes on someone's ear, yeah, and this goes around someone's mouth. You know, you're gonna get spit, you're gonna get bad breath, you're gonna get, if they're eating bits of food, go on here. You know, some people, they love them, bloody. Jesus Christ. Anyway, some some people are pretty minging, and I dare say they speak really close to it and lick it and all sorts. So um, I always get the I haven't got it here, but I got bleach. It's in the other room, um, and bleach this and give this a good clean out because look at the dirt what's in there, and I've just unscrewed all of that. See, so and uh, yeah, so I always do that as a matter of any, even if it's a fully working phone. I'll always take this off and give it a clean on the inside and do the ear one as well. Because you never know, do you? You know, it's just maybe it's me being OCD or germophobic or whatever, but that's what I do. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, off we go. Right, I've had a bit of trouble with the radio for the van. I mean, I had, uh, I had that antenna that um, I couldn't really get the SWR set very well on the van and then I moved the radio out because I might sell it to a mate of mine and I've got this old one here it's uh, whatever if you can read that upside down it's one of them um, I couldn't get it to work when I first acquired it um, but last night I played around with it a little bit uh, managed to get it to power up um, so we've got power up now and hopefully if we can find a channel we can get it to work trouble is it's uh, it's upside down at the minute but the, the channel selecting buttons are a bit dodgy, I've got to try and work them out. But last night, look, I can make them go up. So if we can get to 16, 17, 18. I'll like there's someone on the 19. I don't know which way you're going. 
Someone on the 19. Only one person by the sounds of it. So anyway. So I got it to receive um, on the 19 by the sounds of things. So it receives, but I need to try and fix this button because it won't go. I can't get it to go down channels. It'll only go up. I mean, it ain't a bad thing because you just go around in the circle, you go right to 40 and back to 1 again, so it's not bad. Channel 9 works, um, PA works, not I never need PA. Squelch and volume appears to work, so. So, this is what I'm doing now then, I've got my little radio here, you know, the fact that the channel switches don't work, it only goes up, it's not a problem yet. Um, what I need to do is I need to sort out the antenna first on the van. So, I'm just extending the power wire on this because it didn't have a very long wire and it's a, it's not a plugged one, it's a thingamajig one. So I'm just extending that, and uh, so I've just extended it quite long, and I'm going to put this... Uh, on the end of it I'm going to solder on this little cigarette lighter plug thing so got my heat shrink, put my heat shrink on, I tend to find these lighters with the little blow torch thing on the end is quite good for doing your heat shrink uh, that makes it shrink down lovely, look at that lovely little bit of heat shrink there we go and I didn't have any red heat, well I have got red heat shrink but I had black heat shrink out, um, so I thought, well, I'll just use the black heat shrink after I've soldered it. That'll do the job lovely. Now what I've got to do is cut the wires to length, because the red one's longer than the black one at the minute, and then solder on that cigarette plug. Right, well, I went out to um, do a bit of grass cutting this morning, but it wouldn't start, this little mower. No, I was... I, you know, I've done it all, checked it all and everything, and it's been running nice, hasn't it? I mean, you'll have seen it running. Uh, got there, and it wouldn't start, would it, of course? So, had a little splutter, and then it wouldn't start after that. No life whatsoever. Didn't have, I didn't bring any tools, did I, of course? You know, me being me, so... Um, I managed to find an adjustable spanner, and got the plug out. Uh, apparently there was no spark there, but I couldn't quite see, so... First thing I'm going to do is have a check to see if I've got any spark. And we might about get it going again. Um, you know, if we've got spark, brilliant. If we haven't, it's going to be a bit annoying. Um, I don't know what the trouble is with it yet. We'll have a look. So, first thing to do, start from the top and, uh, well, the front, I should say. Check for spark. Yeah, so, I'm hoping it's just just a case of it needed a bit of stuff sprayed in it. But I'm going to check the spark first because I'm going to be putting it over for six years and, uh, and there's no spark. It's really wet in there, so I reckon there is petrol getting in there. I if there's too much petrol getting in there or not. I don't know, but there's definitely petrol getting in there. So, see if I can find a, an old t-shirt to wipe that off. And uh, it's not it's not that bad. It's, it's not a bad plug. It's not dirty or anything, so. Don't forget this, this mower is 40 years old nearly. It's getting on for that anyway. So, if I place that there, like that, um, you know what I'll do? If I zoom in on this, I should better look at the screen. Oh. And that'll tell me whether I've got a spark, won't it? Oh, I don't care about all that, folks. There we go. Yeah. There's spark. I saw the spark. So we definitely got a spark. So I can take that off of there now. Put that back. I'm fairly convinced then our trouble is fuel. What have I got up here that's flammable? Hey? Hey? Flammable, eh? Hey, hey, hey? Um got a bit of this. 
that's what I usually use engine degreaser that's good stuff that's perfectly flammable if I can get that to go in that air filter and not always though it's a difficult air filter to spray into this one right here we go then is it gonna work? Something doesn't seem quite right with it. It's gone really, really hard to pull on that pull star. I don't know if I like that very much. Well, 